Okay. Welcome back to Nickel and just comic core Nick Classic Classic Classics. This is episode number tw oh, 2136 and double shot 23. I got two DC trades. One that is the regular DC versus the Emerson Vertigo. First up we have is Suicide Squad King Shark. Yeah, this was originally digital first series that was released as 12 chapters that was later collected as a 6 issue miniseries. Well, reprint anyways. This is done by Tim Seeley. And despite being called King Shark, he's not really the main character of the story. Do you want to know who it is? It's somebody who, at the time this book was released, this character had not been seen in, oh my gosh, like four years. Defacer, Nightwing's ex-girlfriend from, from Tim Silly's run for Nightwing. Yes, she is the main character of the story. Yes, Sean is back. Yeah, this is something though. A character has not been seen since Nightwing issue 34 of the most recent volume. And that was back, I think it was like in 20... Uh, I think it was about 2017 that was, came out. Yeah, 2017. Yeah, long time. And also, the runoffs group, they're in here too. And so is Pigeon. Yep, so any character associated with Tim Seeley's run, Tim Seeley probably must have heard that nobody at DC is doing any of these characters. So he's like, hey, I'm putting in this book because no one gives a damn about characters I created. I'm guessing that would happen. But we do get we get Defacer get sent to Bell Rev all places. I thought that was kind of weird. Bell Rev basically Defacer. Excuse me. They mention her as a graffiti artist. They mention yeah, she's a villain, but she's she's basically a graffiti artist. And they get she's sort of basically going with King Shark to play in a tournament. Though when they recap his backstory, they do mention he fought Aquaman and then he went to Hawaii to fight Superboy. That's a bit out of order from her perspective. That probably is her misremembering. We do see a quick cameo here by, of course, Harley Quinn. Yep, Harley Quinn is here. She doesn't do anything. Yeah. But it's not just any con else, kind of kind of suit boy. It's the one from the 1990s when Ron March wrote the book, which is awesome. Uh, the Aquaman book. Uh... Okay, the attire is correct for the 90s, mostly. Except there's one small problem with this. You're probably thinking, what is the problem with this particular picture when it comes to King Shark? Well, King Shark never really appeared in the... Excuse me. Like, the, what, what the run they're referencing here... Like... As far as I can tell, King Shark never actually appeared in Aquaman until, like, uh, after his appearance in Superboy. Not before. Because it's, oh yeah, he fought, I fought Aquaman first, then he fought Superboy. No, that's not the case. Because King Shark first showed up in Superboy number zero. That was his debut appearance. And you're probably thinking, what was the first time he showed up in issue of Aquaman, you might ask? Aquaman Volume 637, which was just before I was retitled to Aquaman Sword of Atlantis. Yep. That's the image coming from basically with the clean shaven Aquaman. But saying he fought Aquaman? Eh. Yeah, that's not entirely true. That could be, my guess is that's probably, and this is just my personal theory anyways, I think the reason why that they had mentioned the fact that he fought um, uh, Aquaman before he fought, well, they fought Aquaman before, um, before he fought Superboy. Uh, that's probably either, and this is my personal guess, this is probably either, uh, Tim Silly misremembering, or two, this is probably DC editorial probably stepping in and say, hey, he fought Aquaman too. And, uh, if they bother to read those books, no, he didn't. 
He's never fought Aquaman. He appeared in his comic book, yes. But never actually fought him. So the whole thing of saying that he fought Aquaman, uh, that's more in case of the new 52 continuity, which he did that. Not the pre-Flashpoint continuity. But anybody who... Oh yeah, they'll mention about the thing about, King, about the Suicide Squad. So it's... Okay, that part is true. Uh, I'm sure anybody who's a fan of Connor Kent loves... I'm sure my friend TV loves seeing this, this suit for, for Connor. And that's when he was headquartered of Hawaii. Because no superhero is hired Hawaii, so he said to go to Hawaii. And of course, because it's 2020... Uh, this came on 2022, I think it was. Oh, the artwork by Scott Nolan's. Um... Yeah, 2021. Of course, we got appearances because of Suicide Squad. We got to throw in the Peacemaker. Of course, Peacemaker. He doesn't say anything, but that's a quick cam by him. And this, and you probably think, ooh, what, what's this big shark? Why is he talking? This guy here is King Shark's father. Yes. King Shark's father is a shark guy. I am not kidding about that. Yes, seriously. Like, he was not really a big... Uh, let's just say he was not a big thing pre-Flashpoint. But apparently in this book he is, which is something. His name is Chukadora. And here's a strange thing about this guy. This book was not his first appearance. Oh no. First appearance in this continuity. Excuse me. Um, first appearance. Suicide Squad Volume 4, 25. So... If you want to think anybody to bring this guy in. You got to think. Uh, well, you got to think Matt not for doing that. Mm -hmm. But I think you actually first parents actually was in 26. Yeah, so you gotta thank Matt not for bringing for bringing this guy in. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's who you gotta thank for it. Great Raider. Yeah, he basically created the the post Flashpoint version of the character. Pre Flashpoint, not really a big player. I don't think he ever really appeared pre Flashpoint. It was mentioned as his father, but it was never really dragged up much of all. It's almost like basically King Shark become more of a player pre Flashpoint. It was. Uh, post flashing was pre mostly anyways and then we have Orca show up yes Orca a character who did appear in Nightwing who by the time Sam Huffer took over dropped for the book yes oh look it's the runoffs remember these guys the characters that apparently DC never gave a damn about these characters because it's like, oh, switch writers, drop half the cast for no reason. Oh yeah, they're still around, except DC doesn't care to use them. Yes, great characters. And of course, we're... then we have this guy called the Man King, which that is an original character in this book. And the appearance here by, of all people, Bawana Beast. Yes, Bawana Beast. Now you're probably thinking, Bawana Beast. Was this comic here the first time he actually appeared in this continuity? No. Well, he made a cameo in the pages of Justin International. But... You could say his first action appearance was this very book. Yep. So Tim Seeley is, you could say, is on a... You could say possibly Dan Jurgens basically brought him in, but... Excuse me. As for any writer who did anything with it, was Tim Seeley. The whole point of this tournament is that who is the strongest. That is mostly put with this book. That's basically what tournament is. Like, who's the strongest? And, but Wannabes is serving as an announcer, which is strange for him. Also, it's been implied in this book that, get this, 
the facer has got a thing for King Shark. No joke. Despite the fact that she supposedly is what man, a, a man, man king. As a matter of fact, they actually sleep together several times in the book. I'm like, damn, dude, you're a lucky guy to get this woman to be with you. And it's more implied she is thing for King Shark than than Man God. Like, oh, because he's handsome, not King Shark. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, he spends the whole book with a blindfold on his face. And there's a reason for that. Yes. Yeah, and also we do see death of a character in here. And look, you can definitely tell John is naked because basically she's topless. Yeah, this happened several times in this book where these two have sex. We do see a little bit of King Shark's backstory in here. Where after he was born, it was taken away by, other, by, by apparently Waller took him away. Which is interesting. Waller is the one raised him, which is weird. Now, here's the thing. King Shark is... I'm not sure how King Shark is supposed to be. But look at Waller here in this flashback. Right in the present day. Are you implying Waller's supposed to be in her 50s? Even though she's probably a little bit younger than that? Who knows? And then, for some reason, we have appearance here by... The Gentleman Ghost. Yes, seriously. Why is he here? Don't know. It feels like his appearance in here feels completely at random. No, seriously. His appearance in this book is completely random. Yeah, because it is. It is so random. The fact that they have him appear in this book. I'm not really sure exactly what was the reason for that, but... But you might be curious, though. Does he appear in a good chunk of his miniseries? He does. He appears from issues 2 through 5. For digital purposes, from 3 through 9. So, yes, he does. The, he appeared in the, he in the Robin Diddy room for Hawkman. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yeah, it's almost like nowadays, it seems like his appearances. Yeah, the Dynamic Ghost and Hawkman villain appears his appearances are complete random at best. You read this book like, Dynamic Ghost, really? Yeah, Pigeon's here too. And I'll get to basically what happens to her in the book. Because Tim still does something with his character because, like you mentioning, DC does not care about his characters. Oh, by the way, we even have a version of the Suicide Squad in this book. Yes, which is comprised of Black Bison, the Gentleman Ghost, Etching a Demon, and Pigeon. And you're probably thinking, what? Really? Why the heck would this, why would a version of Suicide Squad appear in this book? The Limbo Legion is what they're called. Yeah, Black Bison, a long time. Firestorm villain. Yes, Con, uh, not Conway, basically Dan Jerkins, who wrote the Fairy of Firestorm book just before the book ended, practically had get this he had Firestorm fight his own rogues gallery during the last few issues of his own solo book no seriously it's like I think Dan Jurgis was trying to fix the book apparently his real name is Black Cloud in Morning yeah it's kind of weird But this Limbo Legion, aka Suicide Squad Black. Like, Black Bison Book is strange. Like, Etrigan, which is even weirder, because why the heck would he be involved with the Suicide Squad? Yes, Tim Seeley. Why the heck would you basically feature Etrigan the Demon? As part of a version of the Suicide Squad. It is by far one of the most strangest things related to this book. Aside from the random appearance by the Gentleman Ghost. Like first you have him. And then you have Etrigan Demon. At least Black Bison makes sense. Because Black... Uh, 
You might be curious, though, was Black Bison part of the Suicide Squad pre-Flashman continuity? By the way, apparently his, they changed his name post-Flashpoint. In post-Flashpoint's Black Clown Morning, pre-Flashpoint, his run name was John Ravenhair. Now, you might find this interesting. Like, did the Black Bison ever join the Suicide Squad? Nope. Never did. Bless you! My only guess is the reason why they included him part of the Suicide Squad is because, at one point, Oswald had practically dumped, basically, the entire rogues gallery in the Suicide Squad. So I guess he figured, though, why not include a fire symbol in here? So he does quit the team. And uh, we do see Death of Pigeon. Yep, Pigeon dies along with uh, King Shark's father. Yep, they both die in this miniseries. Jim Ghost is fine. Yeah. I mean, I get maybe killing off like King Shark's father because it goes a good character moment for him. Fine, that's perfectly fine, but Pigeon? Well, Pigeon was a character with Tim Seeley, so yeah, kill out and by the way, he's not the only one. Oh no, because they revealed that Man Guy was a villain the whole time. Yeah, despite the fact that the phase was a villain, despite the fact she's a graffiti artist. Yep. Ever, ever so crazy and the man guy takes off his okay I'm not going to show because it's absolutely disgusting because they've healed this toward the end of the series or apparently under his eye like he has no eyeballs he has these things in his eyes like basically this makes you sick but I'm not showing it because it is actually uh, toward the end of issue 5 but I'm not showing it because you're like Oh my gosh, that's disgusting. Yes, because it is. It's absolutely disgusting. He's brainwashing people. Though he does die by the end of the issue. And and he basically gets killed by... Yeah, he gets hit and bitten off by King Shark. So apparently then all of a sudden... Uh, Blackgate gets attacked by King Shark. Who just breaks in and makes a deal with Waller. In exchange for the face to be let go from the prison. He'll basically stay there. It's like. Basically. She's like. You're going to think about the face. Hey, you're, gonna, you're going to commute her sentence. Let her walk. You don't need her anyway. With Pigeon dead. You're going to live with Lee and run. In exchange for that. You're going to get me. I will walk right back into my cell, my bed, books, and humper. I'll be able to get a drop off with a bunch of tags and creeps and moment notice. Uh, your weapon missions are too dangerous for two dirty males. I'll chop fools for you and chop the bodies. But see, here's the thing. Back in the wild run, I would bathe in the blood of wild revolution. It washed up my genes since for 10,000 years of time. It, but it just isn't me. So in the sake of future, it's the beast. It's Orca, Mr. Cat, yes, it's Sean. Mayor Cat Master. His point is, I reckon my approach, I don't want Man King. Man King. <laughs> and so, yeah, he's allowed to go back to his cell, no problem. He frees people, becomes like a hero for Suicide Squad. And the face who goes home and just... Reconciles with Nightwing. And then basically, Orc goes back to the group. King Shirt is like, I'm heading to wife to visit my ma. You want to come? You can get that vacation you never got. Tiki drinks and feral chickens on me. So, Fisher, look, Shar, I appreciate the attempt I do. Learn to walk away from your animal nature and your. <laughs> okay and of course they go off and 
Then apparently 10,000 years in the future, apparently we have the Legion of Super Hannibals. What? Yes, what a weird ending, but this was a really good miniseries. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I will basically talk about Get, Get Joker later, but damn, this is good. You can basically read this as like, Tim Seeley basically probably doing anything with his own characters. Though he does kill off one character per se, which, fine. It was probably a good, nice ending of the character. Excuse me, but... He probably felt as though that... It could be that he felt a little bit slighted by DC Comics for not bothering to use any of his characters in any books. That, or maybe was under contract stuff, who knows. But I love this miniseries. It is really good. I get that book a 9.5 out of 10. Next up we have is the second to last book discussed for Preacher. Yeah, because next book, book 6, and that, I think that's it. This book collects basically issues 34 to 40, along with a few one-shots. Oh, and here's something interesting, though. Uh, Steve Dillon doesn't do all the issues. Nope, he actually skips an issue. Yes, he does some of the issues, not all of them. Uh, of course, Gotham is still the writer. With Pierre Sanger on the artwork with also Carl Eckhart and Richard Chase. The um, Glenn Fibre does the original cover art. Now, this book collects, like I said, mentioned 34 to 40, along with the Preacher Specials, the story of You Know Who, Our Space, The Good Old Boys, and One Man's War. A lot of the stuff in here relates to, well, the guy on the cover, hair starving a little bit of his backstory, the fact he's still dealing with this chubby guy who likes to vomit. Oh boy, because he eats so much. And apparently he also set it up where a, bro a crazy brother and sister slept together and had a child. Because that apparently was the right thing to do. I mean, the stuff for him is mixed at best. Jessica is interesting. Like, he still with Tallulah, then he apparently dies, but loses an eye. But his stuff is really good. Cassidy, who's in here, he doesn't do a lot of anything except trying to console two of those who are in the next book that he, they apparently been sleeping together. Yep, this feels like, oh yeah, the whole thing with Arseface. He apparently has become a celebrity. Where they actually put his backstory in here, which I kind of knew about. The Arseface got the way he is because he tried to commit suicide by blowing his own chin off. And apparently his father was really abusive toward him. But apparently he decided to not bother abusing him anymore once he became suicidal. And apparently he became very popular for his look for his face. Yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. It's almost like we have a lot of weird stuff in this book. Now I do enjoy Preacher, mainly for its artwork and the character Jesse Coulter. Uh, but a lot of the other stuff is just okay at best. Hair Star, it seems like he's plenty on some stuff, but it's more like this book is a lot of build up to something. But we only have one book left to go for Preacher, and then we know a Preacher. All right. So yeah, that's it for the review. Next up is going to be a review for One Piece, and then I'll talk about Trigon Snap Peak. Hey, next video. Bye.